Well, uh, uh, this is my life now. It's been really tough to get review codes lately. I'm sorry I haven't covered the likes of Lies of P, Spider-Man 2, Lords of the Fallen. And since we're gonna be talking about a really bad video game in this video, I need to make sure you're aware of something great in video games, which is why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor. The following video is brought to you by Backbone, which is designed to transform your smartphone into a next-gen gaming device similar to an Xbox. As you're seeing here, I'm using the Backbone One controller, which can snap into your iPhone or Android phone, allowing you to play anywhere without charging or waiting for updates or a tedious setup it's just a simple snap in and start playing and why bother with skull island i'm doing that for you go play something fun whether you're doing what i'm doing here with halo infinite season 5 content i'm streaming this via the cloud or remote play you can access all of this through the backbone app which is your hub for your mobile gaming needs bringing together all different games and services into one place now you'll see here i'm playing lies of p and remote play and it's a souls like game and it's working beautifully i've been really getting into to using my backbone more so that I can game around the house, whether it be in bed or on the couch, outside of my office, and it has been an absolute game changer. So ladies and gentlemen, what are you waiting for? Go to playbackbone.com or use the link in the description to check out the Backbone One controller. Shout out to Backbone for sponsoring today's video. Trust me, I have been up everyone's inbox about these, but it just doesn't seem to be going my way as of late. But that's okay, because I'm reviewing the real bangers, the ones that you really need answers on, like Skull Island Rise of Kong. I've reviewed a lot of games this year. I've reviewed Redfall. I've reviewed Avatar Quest for Balance. I've reviewed Lord of the Rings Gollum. I've played a lot of garbage this year, okay? And there's been a lot of good this year, mind you. This is the worst. This is arguably the worst game that's ever been made, but absolutely the worst game of the year. How do you one-up Gollum? I don't know, but I am so upset with what I see on screen here. Ladies and gentlemen, it's already on sale. I bought this game for 30 bucks. It's a $40 game. It was off for 20% day one. Okay, let's not dilly-dally anymore. I'm here to tell you why Skull Island Rise of Kong is the worst game in 2023. I thought Gollum had the surefire bet, that's why I went for the title with that one, but it looks like Kong has managed to surpass it, which is truly impressive. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're new here and you do like reviews, I swear to God we review good games here. Yes, consider subscribing. And with that, where do I begin? This is the biggest combination of a game that's filled with nothing but also has enough content for me to talk about something you'll see what i mean because when you look at it visually this is the most uninspired artistic endeavor i have seen now you may be wondering who's behind this it's a developer of 50 called iguana b and it's published by game mill entertainment now if you watch retro rebound you'll know that suddenly we got a bit of a vendetta against this company. They're putting all of their resources into Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2. That much is clear because in the last two months, they have published two of the worst games of the year. I reviewed over on Retro Rebound Avatar Quest for Balance and I called it offensively bad. This is a franchise that deserves high quality treatment. If you gave it the Hogwarts Legacy treatment, people would flock, it would do extremely well, I'm not asking for everything here, but we could have put way more effort into that game. And the PS2 game that I had running on the CRT in the background was far, far better. That game's an absolute joke. Game Mill published it, and they're starting to get a bit of a rep for being the modern age THQ. Remember for kids who were like me growing up in the early 2000s, every Nickelodeon game from Fairly Odd Parents Breaking the Rules to Jimmy Neutron, Jet Fusion, all these SpongeBob games, THQ was on the cover, for better or for worse. Game Mill is that, but my God, what is going on over there? Because when you look at Avatar Quest for Balance, at least artistically, I, I called it mildly acceptable. Like it didn't look awful, but you look at Kong, holy shit, dude. Th this is, as I said, the most uninspired artistic endeavor I have seen because it's just plain assets. Someone took the terrain tool in engine and went Okay, there we go. There, there's our game, <laughs> that's what it is. They took palm trees, little tufts of grass, 
terrain, and they said, that's the game. Have fun leaping around as Kong. Okay, so there actually is a story here that spans five chapters. It begins with a tutorial where you're playing as Kong's mother, and Kong is under siege from the big dinosaur Gaw. And so as you're going through this very janky tutorial, which you don't realize because they kind of use the same character model but scaled up, that you're actually playing as the mom. I, I, again, I didn't pick up on this initially because you get all these moves like Kong can leap by holding the left trigger in A. And then you get to the first chapter where you're actually playing as Kong and I'm trying to leap and I'm going like, is the controllers busted? Is this a bug? It wouldn't surprise me at this point. But you realize, oh no, you're playing as Kong and he's younger and so he's relearning all those skills. So when you recognize that the tutorial, which felt awful, you know how most games start off with a tutorial and you've got every power in the game and then you lose it all and you gradually regain it, which to me is one of the worst tropes in game design. This game does that, but it feels awful off the rip and then it strips it down to an even more bare bones nature. So you're playing as Kong's mother and uh, yes, yeah, she gets wrecked. She's dead. And so Kong says, well, I'm out of here. I'm going to exact revenge. But before he does that, he runs into a wall. Yeah, you'll see in the cutscene when he is trying to run away into a bush that there's a wall right there. These cutscenes are terrible. But you know what's worse? Take a listen to the audio to open the game. There are stories of gods told by fanatics. Stories of key. I have played Game Boy Advance games that have way less audio compression than whatever hell spawn this is. But he was weak. This is the worst audio in a modern video game in probably decades. Like it is, there are PS2 games that sound better than this. This reminds me of Shenmue NPCs and Dreamcast games. Like that's how far back we have to go to match up the audio quality here. Now, typically what happens is audio is compressed to save file space, but what are we saving space on? This game looks horrible. There's not much going on here. It's the lowest of lowest quality. Now I'm not gonna sit here and act like what I said with Avatar where, you know, we're talking about a series that deserves treatment of the highest caliber. But look, Kong has actually got a great game. It's the Peter Jackson game from 2005. You know, the time where every game that released was on every platform from PS2 to GameCube to phones all the way to the Xbox 360. I mean, you thought there were a lot of platforms now. Oh, look back then, it was crazy. But this game, you got to have a first person shooter, but a more cinematic approach as well to playing as Kong. And it was actually pretty awesome. Still to this day, it's one of those showpieces for how good old console games could look. But when I fired this up to go, okay, I gotta test my memory. I'm going back to a 2005 game, which already says enough about the quality of Skull Island. But okay, let me go back and see what this game was doing compared to the modern one. And it's the second time a game mill published title has had me do this. I went back to a 2006 Avatar The Last Airbender game to size it up to Quest for Balance. That should, I don't care what your budget is, I don't care who's behind it, that should never happen in the modern age of games ever. When there's more tools, there's tutorials online, there's more creative inspiration than ever, and you're telling me I'm sizing up games from two generations, three generations ago, to figure out if one's better than the other? But anyway, you've seen on screen already that this King Kong game from back in 2005 absolutely stomps out anything from an artistic level to a budget level to a gameplay level that Skull Island barely attempts to do. It's it's heinous, okay? Because like you look at this Kong game from 2005, the Peter Jackson game, you can pull spears out of bones and throw them at enemies. Again, there's first person shooting. The music is bombastic. Jack Black is in the game. I mean, it's awesome stuff, right? But then you look at this, how did this get released? Like, that's the thing. Like, I'm not even gonna ask what happened. I know what happened. You didn't try. You slapped together a bunch of assets, collected your check, put the game on sale, hoped all, you know, a couple dozen of Kong fans who had this one on their list were like, man, I gotta get that day one. I love Kong. And you're trying to take advantage of them here. And that's been the game mill business strategy. Like they're hoping that Quest for Balance, which I almost vomited in my mouth when I was in Best Buy and I saw it there on store shelves and it was like a mildly empty shelf. I went, man, are parents coming in here and picking this up or is this just short on stock? I can't tell yet, but I saw that. I was like, man, they're just trying to put out these popular IP, these licensed games and hope that 
consumers that don't know any better pick it up. I am not this type of dude. I put my money where my mouth is. I went for the refund on this one. I went through Xbox's digital refund program. I was like, no, I'm not. I want $30 back. I'm not spending money on this. Like it was that bad. At least Gollum, and I can't believe I'm saying this, at least Gollum had something unique about it. It was terrible, but at least it had something unique about it where I could look at it and go, okay, like they, tr they, they had a very mildly, barely evolved idea here, but at least there's an idea. With Skull Island, look at the combat. You're just waving your arms around. There's parrying, kind of. They almost try to go like a Souls-like game where you lock on the camera and the red health bars on the bottom with the enemy's name. And you could tell by the way the movement is and the dodge rolling. I'm like, what? Did you guys really try to FromSoft this game at a certain point? But it's so bare bones. This is what we call pre-alpha, okay? So in game development, you get to a certain stage where you can run from point A to point Z. It's not pretty. It's not perfect, but the game can go from quest one to the final quest in the game and you can finish it. It's from there that you start polishing artistically, programmatically, and so on. You start polishing. This is a pre-alpha, like artistically, gameplay-wise, like the buttons are there, the buttons work. It doesn't feel good. It's not really fun to play, but the ideas are all there. We just have to evolve and clean them up and present them better. This game needed at least another two to three years at minimum to be presentation worthy, to be maybe advertiser worthy. That sickens me, man, that we're actually at this stage now, and I know it's not all games, but we're at the stage now where PC port quality is at an all time low, and now we're being sold pre-alphas. Granted, I know someone out there is gonna say, this, it's not full price, Maddie. Why would you ever in a million years wanna make an excuse for a game like Skull Island? From the audio compression to the gameplay, it's disgusting. They put a skill tree in here, at least they tried to, where as you complete challenges around this kind of semi-open map, you're going to get skill points and you can spend them on increasing how much damage you do, how much damage you can take. But there's even mild things that you think at the most bare bones would have been there. Like when I'm throwing a rock at an enemy, I did it against this worm boss at the end of my playthrough. And as I'm trying to chuck this thing at the enemy, there's not even a reticle to aim. But meanwhile, when you're trying to do the leap in the tutorial, there's a reticle and you can't even leap that far. I didn't know we could make such a, a cool character with amazing abilities feel so awful. But here we are with Skull Island Rise of Kong, this origin story that could have been epic in a lot of ways. And obviously it's nothing close to that. Uh, these cutscenes are embarrassing. I just, it's funny because again, there is a complete game here. It's just at its absolute most bare bone in a pre-alpha state. And it sickens me that I had to fire this one up. There are also, as you're roaming around this big open zone, uh, collectibles that you can find, and there's lore in the game, and I just, that's what blows my mind. I'm like, there are actually, it's a nothing burger, right? Like, you're looking at the game, you're like, there's nothing of value here, but there are things in the game. I wouldn't call it a complete package, but there are components of the game. There are layers, if you will, to the experience, although they are the thinnest of layers. There are things happening here where that's what makes me the most angry is they went and went, okay, enough content here, ship it. I don't know what Kong related thing is happening now where this game had to come out now. We're in the heat of the holiday season. We're in the heat of a lot of strong games releasing. Look at the look at the open critic score for Spider-Man 2 and look at the open critic score for what's happening with Super Mario Bros. Wonder. And you're telling me you're like, yeah, yeah, let's right now is our moment. Let's even if you feel you're wasting money. Now is your moment, not even in two months when nothing else is really coming out outside of Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. This is your moment here and now. Man, man, come on. I know y'all are better businessmen and women than that. Why are we funding these things if we don't have the budget to make a properly licensed game? That's the other thing. Like, Game Mill has published great kart racing games. The Nickelodeon Kart Racers 2 and 3 are apparently some of the best competitors to Mario Kart, which is saying something because I think Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is like chef's kiss. It's so good, right? It feels 
beautiful but this is the strongest competitor to that they also have a great smash bros competitor in nick all-star brawl i know a lot of people dunk on nick all-star brawl one i got the platinum trophy for it i love that game and i'm very excited for nick all-star brawl 2 so there are moments where you see the budget is there so they have these moments with nickelodeon games and as someone who grew up as like a nicktoons kid you know i mentioned all of them spongebob jimmy neutron fairly odd parents and the list goes on uh, like i i look at what they're doing here where they have these moments of oh they actually got something but they're going too wide now like if you don't have the budget to give to a developer of 50 to make a proper king kong game then don't do it no one's really asking for a Kong game unless it's of a high quality. And that's been the moral of the story in 2023. We don't have time for mid video games, let alone awful video games, let alone the absolute worst this year has had to offer. I can't believe this is on store shelves. When you look at how Cyberpunk got taken down off of the PlayStation Store and how much shovelware has been thrown on there, when you look at Xbox, which has a pretty clean storefront compared to their competition, I don't know how this is actually made it to store shelves. Why this is allowed to be sold is beyond me. This should be taken down as soon as possible. Not just because people shouldn't fall into this scam, but this is lowest of lowest of low quality. It should not be sold. It is not up to standards to be sold. Not even of a decent quality. It doesn't have to be a great game. It doesn't have to be a good game. It can be a bad game, but it hasn't even reached bad game standards. It is pitifully below that. So Skull Island Rise of Kong is the worst game to come out in 2023. Sorry to the developers of Guana B. I'm sure that while you only did what you could based off the budget you got, it doesn't excuse that this should never have been sold. And that's why Game Mill has to get the smoke here because they cannot continue to do these licensed products and embarrass themselves when they're actually capable of publishing decent games. But now when I see that Game Mill logo, it's that 50-50 feel, man. It's immediately like, oh man, we either get a Nick All-Star Brawl, a Nick Kart Racer, or you get something like this, which is gonna live in my nightmares for a while. So. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you. And I'm looking forward to seeing your thoughts on Skull Island Rise of Kong. We are still doing fun video game reviews. I'm hoping to deliver my final thoughts on Lies of P this week. And we also did Sonic Superstars as a review over on Retro Rebound. But otherwise, ladies and gentlemen, that's it from me. Feel free to check those other pieces of content out if you're looking for something a little bit more positive. Again, I'm looking forward to your thoughts on Skull Island Rise of Kong. Take great care of yourselves. And I will see you in the next video. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.